In this video, we will be covering mandibular first premolars, known as number 21 and number 28 in the universal numbering system. We will be looking at tooth number 28 today. Mandibular first premolars calcify when a child is 18 to 24 months of age. They complete their crowns when a child is 5 to 6 years old, erupt when a child is 10 to 12 years of age, they complete their roots at 12 to 13 years old. Of all the premolars, the mandibular first premolar is the smallest premolar. Now we will take a look at all aspects of the tooth beginning at the buccal. In the buccal aspect, we can see that the distal cusp ridge is longer than the mesial cusp ridge. Because of this, the buccal cusp tip is slightly mesial to the midline. The mandibular first premolar has a particularly pointy buccal cusp tip, especially when compared to the mandibular second premolar. We can also see from this view that the mesial side of the tooth is straight, while the distal side of the tooth is somewhat bulbous. The proximal height of contour for all posterior teeth are in the middle third, so the mesial and distal height of contours for the mandibular first premolar are both in the middle third. However, the mesial height of contour is slightly more occlusal. From the mesial view, we can see that the tooth has a rhomboid shape to it. There is also a mesial lingual developmental groove that tracks to the lingual surface. The mesial marginal ridge is vertical and is the only marginal ridge deemed non-functional. There is no mesial or distal crown depression on this tooth. There is a deeper mesial root depression than the distal root depression. From this view, you can see how the lingual cusp is significantly shorter than the buccal cusp. The two cusp tips are also facing more towards each other than outwards. This will differentiate the mandibular premolars from the maxillary premolars, which have nearly equal buccal and lingual cusp heights, with their two cusps facing more away from each other. Moving on to the lingual view, pay close attention to the lingual cusp. Out of all of the premolars, the first mandibular premolar has the smallest lingual cusp. It's about half the size of the buccal cusp. The lingual cusp resembles the cingulum of a canine. We can also see the mesial marginal ridge is more cervical than the distal marginal ridge. From this view, we can also see the mesial lingual developmental groove. As a clinical note, if you're doing a class 2 preparation, make sure to slant the pulpal floor. It will need to be higher buccally to avoid the large buccal pulp horn. Now we will take a look at the distal view. We can see from this view again how small the lingual cusp is compared to the buccal cusp. Just look at the mesial view. This side also has a rhomboid shape. We see a root developmental depression, however, the mesial will have the deeper of the two. Here you can see the buccal and the lingual height of contours very clearly. The buccal height of contour is in the gingival third, while the lingual height of contour is in the middle third. When looking at the occlusal view, we can see that the transverse ridge and both the distal and mesial ridges are very prominent, the most prominent of all of the premolars. Because of this, the mesial and distal fossa are very distinct and have a snake eyes appearance. Due to the lingual cusp's small size, the lingual portion of the transverse ridge is less prominent than the buccal portion of the transverse ridge. Lastly, the tooth has a diamond-shaped occlusal surface. The mesial lingual groove starts in the mesial fossa and tracks lingually. This tooth has the most narrow root. It typically has one canal, but between this tooth and the mandibular second premolar, this tooth is more likely to have a second canal. This tooth also has two pulp horns, and much like its cusps, the buccal pulp horn is much larger than its lingual pulp horn. Also remember that there is a deep developmental depression on the mesial surface of the root. That was our review of the mandibular first premolar. Check out the rest of our dental anatomy videos on mydentalkey.com. 
The 3D images used in this video were brought to you by Bonebox. Bonebox is a great resource for learning dental anatomy. Check them out in the App Store today.